This is the Holy Ghost way. I'm Harlan. I'll tell you a story today that in 1970, Jesus told me the Bible is an idol. Well, he deceived me. He sacrificed me. He sacrificed my life. And it's the only way he could get it done. Because if I'd have known I was going to be a sacrifice and nobody would ever receive this message, I would have not been excited about it. Jesus knew what he was doing. God deceived Jeremiah. Jeremiah told them people for 40 years, and they wouldn't believe him. But when they stand before God, they say, Lord, we didn't know. He said, yeah, you did know, because Jeremiah told you. And when you stand before God, you'll say, I didn't know. They say, say Harlan told you the Bible's the mark of the beast, the Bible's an idol. I thought we could have a Holy Ghost church that was going to be prophesying and telling people the truth and living in, in uh, the old age, you know. But this is the Industrial Revolution time. You can't have farms like the Quakers. They had 50,000 people. But they lived out on farms and things. Out. You can't be separate today. You can't live separate in this world. So when you take up this, I've seen so many people say, Harlan, this is great. I love this so much. I know this is true. And then I don't hear from them no more. What happened to them? Because their mother hates them. Their mother-in-law hates them. They lose their job. They try to start little churches like I did. I'd have a church for a year, maybe two years, and even three years. But pretty soon they'd start falling away, throwing in the towel. Why? Because you can't live this. Jesus knew they couldn't live this. Jesus knew they would mock me and hate me and put me in jail. I preached this in Canada, in America, in South America, Brazil. They don't want this. You can't live this. This is too hard to live. They can't endure this today. In Jeremiah's day, they didn't want that. They, they couldn't live under the law. It was too hard. It was, too, it was weak through the flesh. So they'd sin. And that's what people are doing today. They're going by the Bible. Because it's easy to go by the Bible. But you know it's an idol. You know it's the mark of the beast. And God sacrificed me. When he told me that, I was so happy. Man, I was floating on clouds. I was going to start some Holy Ghost churches. We was going to get outside the Bible. But the Bible's established in the world now. The Catholic people's got over a billion people and the Protestants. There's 2 billion, 200 million uh, Bible worshipers in the world today. I didn't have a chance. Preachers told me, you don't have a chance, hillbilly. They won't hear you. You can't preach this. And I said, I can, and I did. <laughs> but God, they mocked me. How many people here on YouTube call me every name under the book? They put me in coffins, put me in the fire. They burn me. They want me dead. Mock me all the time. Why? Because they can't live this. This is unlivable in this world today. People get it, and they want it, and I know they're sincere. But when they, their house gets burned down or they get run out of town or something, so you Christians, and listen to what I'm going to tell you. The ones of you who believe us, stay low. Stay low. Don't let them know who you are. Like when Paul was converted, he couldn't find the Christians. They was hit out. So stay hit out. Now let me tell you this for sure. This is a sure thing. God told me this. There will be a few of you overcome the mark of the beast because of this hillbilly. <laughs> You'll do it. I guarantee you. You'll be standing there with me on that day when all these Bible worshipers walking up there and Jesus will be telling them, I didn't send you no Bible. I sent you the Holy Ghost. Harlan was right. I'm not right in this world, but when this is over, Jesus told me yesterday he loved me. And I know this is true. And he wanted me to tell you, I was deceived. I was sacrificed. And he sacrificed men pumpkin for this life so you can know this truth. He sacrificed Jeremiah so they'd know the truth. And Jesus was sacrificed so they'd know the truth. This ain't a new thing. But Jesus deceived me. Now, you will overcome a few of you, but the most of you won't do it. You can't handle it. You'll run off and you'll, you'll attack me. You know, if you can't live the message, you'll attack the messenger. And you do all kind of crazy things because you can't live this. this. This can't be lived publicly. It's just hard. God has to hide me out. He saved me many times. They want to kill me because they mocked me. Jeremiah, they put him in the dungeon. <laughs> you know, when Nebuchadnezzar and them come in there, they got Jeremiah out like Jeremiah was his friend. See, they're going to deliver me. You're the ones who are going to go into captivity. That's where the Ark of the Covenant went to Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. He took the Ark and everything. He tore it out of the temple. Well, you see, that's what's happening today. I'm outnumbered. i got two billion people against me. And I can't win. I've, I've been deceived. I was so happy. A lot of y'all that said, I'm going to build a Holy Ghost church. You found out you couldn't do it. A lot of you, I could call you names and tell you. And you're so happy about this message, but now you're so sad about it because you can't live it. But take it anyway and live it the best you can. 
And there'll be some, and I'll, I'll be teaching this later, there'll be some overcome the mark of the beast because God deceived me. I was so happy in, in the springtime of 1970, 44 years ago. Hallelujah. I, I was walking on clouds, man. We're going to have a Holy Ghost church, but they can't receive it today. You can't have it today. It is impossible. You cannot live this in society today. They'll do you in. They put me in jail and everything. Run me out of all the churches. My family hate, hated me and just tried to destroy me. Everybody wanted me dead. But I'm still here because God wants you to know this. Jesus said my voice will be heard again in the land. And it's going to be heard again in the land. He deceived me. But he got the work done. And I'm glad he did. Because I don't want that other life. I don't want the flash life. You know, vacations and big holiday ends and, and happy times. I don't want the flesh. I want God. I'm glad he deceived me. I'm glad to tell this truth. I love him. And you know, he wasn't deceived. He knew he was headed for the cross. I didn't know I was going to die, but I'm dead. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. But I'm happy because I know I'm in the truth. And when we stand there, all of us, before Jesus, in this dispensation of time, and Jesus will tell you, Harlan told you the truth. He told you the truth. I told it to him, but you couldn't live it. You couldn't give up your flesh life. Your mother-in-law got against you. And so you gave up. And you can't handle this. And that's the way it is. But he deceived me and got the work done. So thank you, Jesus, for what you did. And remember this. This is going to be historical. But a few of you will overcome the mark of the beast. Amen. Gracious to God. Amen.